They're talking about configuring their, uh, their reaction control jets, which are the little pulse jets which move them around uh, in orbit, change their attitude. Of course, uh, they have to maneuver uh, uh, continually uh, to change their thermal attitudes in this flight as they did in the other. So those engines are very important. They're also important for reentry. No problem, it's just a configuration change at this time. Just constantly uh, checking everything to make sure that everything's going well. 21 minutes and five seconds into the mission, all goes well. A another reminder that immediately after we get off the air with the uh, launch of uh, the uh, Columbia, that this week with David Brinkley will come on at its uh, regularly scheduled time. And the featured guest today will be Senator Charles Percy, who is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and uh, William Hyland, who is a former uh, expert or former National Security Council advisor under President Ford, and they naturally will be talking about uh, the uh, rather surprising event of last Friday when Secretary of State Alexander Haig submitted his resignation and uh, perhaps to his surprise discovered that it was accepted and uh, is now to be replaced by George Shultz. So American foreign policy will be the topic of this week with David Brinkley right after we get off the air here. Our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in just a moment. Four minutes and uh, 12 seconds into the flight of Columbia, the space shuttle now in its fourth mission into space. As you can see, they're still over Africa. All goes well, still in their first orbit. 25 minutes or so, and everything proceeding flawlessly. We've had no indication of any trouble. The communications between Houston and the astronauts uh, have simply been more or less routine as they've uh, made the various adjustments that are required to get them into the proper orbit, and everything goes well. Now, as we've indicated before, this is the first time that there is a Defense Department uh, package on board, but there are also some other equipment uh, and uh, passengers, you might say, on board this uh, particular mission. They're called the Getaway Specials, and Lynn Schur has a report on just what's involved in these various packages. Lynn? When you ask Walt Moore and Amber Daly their feelings about this mission of the space shuttle, they have no trouble finding the one right word. Excited. <laughs> Fantastic. Walt and Amber, along with eight other young scientists, have experiments riding aboard Columbia, back in the payload bay, in a specially constructed trash can-sized canister. It's one of 320 spaces that have been reserved for future research by private individuals and foreign governments. This, the very first to fly, was purchased for $10,000 by Gil Moore. He donated half the space on this inaugural voyage to Utah State University where Amber, a senior math and philosophy major, worked out her experiment, placing an uncured sample of a composite made of resins into a heater to see if the process of curing in zero gravity makes the material stronger than if cured on Earth. The other Utah State students' experiments are similarly trying to see if zero gravity affects certain processes, seeing how well oil and water mix in space testing which of 96 types of solder works best for future space work. Observing the root growth of duckweed plants, a potential source of space food. The other half of the canister holds experiments from Gil Moore's two sons. Bruce wants to study the genetic effects of microgravity on tiny brine shrimp hatched on orbit. And Walt Moore has constructed this cage for fruit flies with tubes to separate the generations so that he can study what happens to successive generations of animals born in zero gravity. The astronauts will activate all the experiments, each self-contained, by throwing a switch or two in their cabin up front. But Walt Moore has plans for keeping a closer watch in the future. If you can come up with an experiment which requires your presence on board, you can fly on the shuttle in the, in the later phases. So now all I have to do is come up with something that's complex enough that they can't do it and they'll have to take me. Okay, thank you. Lynn, sure, you're going to have a busy week down there at Houston. Absolutely, Frank. I just wanted to point out that uh, director Steven Spielberg, who made E.T. and Poltergeist, also has one of the getaway specials, so maybe one day soon we'll get a science fact movie from him from space. Well, he's done pretty well so far. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we will. Gene, uh, you enjoyed it, I assume? Frank, it was tremendous and uh, certainly an outstanding way to start the uh, completion of our test phase program and make uh, the Columbia and its uh, sister and ships truly, uh, truly worthwhile for us all. And right on the button, and you have the envy of uh, 
Lynn Scherer, and of me, too, because uh, you were there to actually see it go, and it does make a difference. Our thanks, too, to Jules Bergman, who was in the uh, firing room there at uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Well, they have seven days, an hour, 13 minutes, and 37 seconds of flight, and they'll come down next Sunday, July the 4th, at uh, the Edwards Air Force Base in California. All goes well with the mission of Columbia, the space shuttle now in its fourth flight. This is Frank Reynolds, ABC News, Washington.